Hello, how's it going? Um, welcome to the K2 Systems webinar on Crossrail and Tile Mounting Solutions. My name is Johan Alfson. I am the Senior Director of Product Marketing for K2. And we also have Nick, who's our Western Regional Sales Manager. And we also have Dakota in the background, making sure things are working well. She's our marketing manager. Um, if you're new to the, I, I highly doubt anyone's new to the webinar scene, but uh, if you are, if you haven't done one of these, everybody is, is muted and um, you can type in questions there. It's all based off your Wi-Fi. So if you have any issues, just make sure your Wi-Fi is clear. Um, everybody is muted, but if you have questions, you can type them into the question box there and, um, and we'll go, we'll do a Q and A at the very end. Um, so hopefully you could see my screen. Looks like everything's working well. I got my camera on. Nick's got his camera on. Um, and we'll show, we'll do a mix of showing product on, on, on these cameras. Uh, I've got some products here. I'll show Nick's going to demonstrate some as well. And then we'll have a bunch of information and pictures on the screen for the slides as well. So, so you can kind of customize your own viewing on your dashboard you can do gallery mode and just play with that and see what works the best so you can see the screen and you can see the cameras and and i think you can select which camera if, if nick's uh, demonstrating some of the stuff in there so uh without further ado we'll just get going so <clears throat> let me make sure my it's a little delayed but i'll there we go so again my name's johan um i'm the director of product marketing. And um, I've been in the industry since 2004, started as an installer. Uh, both Nick and I worked at Quick Mount for many years and helped get them started. And obviously, um, the industry is always growing and people move around and companies get bought. Um, so we, I joined K2 in 2000, at the end of 2018, was it, I believe? Wow, it's been a while. Uh, and so I've been around for for a couple of years now and Nick as well joined just after me and um, I've been a lot involved in code compliance roofing best practices product development on the on the mounting side uh, teaching classes and and doing trainings I've worked with um, all the different conferences done presentations there the NAPSEP conference SPI InterSolar all the different SIA chapters in the states um, SEI is a good training organization as well as the MR, MREA. I've worked with them on, on different trainings um, and different articles and different publications. So uh, my specialty is in roofing and mounting for solar, um, but we are going to get into a couple different things here and obviously focus on the tile side. So um, so I'll do some introductions of the company and some of us. Uh, we did change our name from K or sorry from Everest to K2. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit here, and then uh, we'll get into the Crossrail, which is our our flagship product and our complete racking system, and then we'll get into roof roof attachments, which we'll be focusing mostly uh, and primarily on tile. Uh, tile products. And with that, we'll talk about a little bit of roofing because it's important to know the roofing side of tile. Um, and then we'll get into all the new products that we are introducing on the tile side. And if we have time, I'll, I'll do a little teaser on, on some of the stuff that's coming because we have a lot of new products coming out. So we've been busy little bees at the K2 headquarters uh, in in uh, San Diego, as well in uh, Guadalajara, the Mexico team and, and the US team kind of work together on product development. So some exciting stuff coming. Um, so again, I mentioned that we changed our name to K2. We've actually always been K2. So it's, it's basically that, you know, K2 started in the early 2000s in Germany and then started opening up offices and branches in different countries as they grew big time. And, uh, and then they eventually opened in the US and the name K2 was not available at the time because there was some K2 solar or something. Uh, so we went with the other mountain and we're Everest in the US and in Mexico. So that started in 2012 and 2015 for Mexico. Uh, but just recently uh, this year, we got the name. So we're all 
all one big happy family and it just avoids confusion across international lines because we do all work together engineers and sales teams from every office all over the world meet together which is great because we there's a lot of things we can learn from other countries and and product development in fact some of the hooks that we're going to tile hooks that we're going to talk about today uh some of them were inspired by the germany office and product team so so we'll talk about that and we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so our sales management team, uh, Ross Gerard is our VP of sales. Uh, you've probably seen him or known him. He's been with the company longer than anybody in sales, uh, aside from our president, Andy. Um, and uh, they all worked together at previous company, been in the industry for a long time. Brett as well. Uh, Brett's our director of business development. You've probably met these two. They've been working hard on this with this team. Uh, over the years, and we've grown quite a bit, our outside sales team. Uh, you've got Al on the East Coast. He's been with us for a long time as well. Uh, Brad came on recently in the Midwest. Um, Mark Jubinville actually is a veteran in the industry and joined us last year. Uh, he's out of Texas. And uh, John Riddle just recently joined us this year, um, managing the Southern California branches or, or uh, accounts just because it's such a large, uh, dense uh, market in Southern California. And then last but not least, Mr. Nick Pack, who's with us on screen. <laughs> He's a uh, Northwest. He's up in the Bay area, which is where I'm from as well. So, uh, we're all over the place, but we do, we do have our headquarters here in San Diego. I'm actually in the San Diego office now as we're all getting vaccinated and, uh, uh, starting to come back to the office a little bit so we can get some work done together as a group. So speaking of the inside group, uh, we got our inside sales team. I'll Alejandra Santana manages our team. She's been with the company for a number of years and she manages the inside uh, sales team, client services and technical sales. Uh, Luce and Brendan are technical sales. So they're helping you guys with designs and backing up Nick and all our outside sales team with designs on our base tool and, and products and how we get in product with distrib distribution and, and to, uh, to, to you guys out there in the field. Uh, and client services as well as obviously working with distributors and, and our customer base as well. And we got Nancy and Amber who just joined us recently uh, supporting that side of client services. So great team. We all work together, one big happy family. And, uh, and we've been growing quite a bit. There's actually some jobs on our, our, on our website if you're wondering about any positions. Um, so I, I did want to mention K2's training and tech support because it's a big deal. I think we have a big, strong customer, um, a customer base because we really take pride in our service. So we have a lot of digital training and resources, NAP separate credit webinars like you're on now. Uh, our YouTube channel is growing with tips and product videos and product training and these webinars that are recorded. Uh, but we also do product training in person at events. Uh, events are starting to come online. We are going to be at the uh, SPI and NABCEP and the, I think the next show is actually the Northeast show in Boston. That, that'll be our first in-person show. We'll be there uh, with a booth and you'll meet some of the guys. I will actually be there myself. Uh, and we do a lot of on-site training as well when people are, are new to um, our product or new to a product that just came out, we will do some on-site training. A lot of times that's me or Nick or Brad or Al uh, or some of our outside guys out on the job supporting you to make sure you understand how the product works and how it's designed. And with that, we do some custom training as well, where we can do these webinars or uh, any kind of Zoom meeting or training um, with your crews or with your sales team. We're actually going to roll out next year a big program that is um, more technical training, more sales training, uh, crew training. So we're customizing all this. I, I, I will actually dip into this a little bit when we talk about efficiency on the roof with tile roofs. Um, so this has been very popular and, and we obviously get out into the job site too. And we can even come to your office and, and work with you because every crew works differently. And when you bring on a new guy, you might want to have them run through our products to make sure he understands the best practices. So we, we do that often. We train uh, crews and then as they bring on new guys, or maybe guys move into a foreman role or a lead install role, uh, we'll, we'll support the team by training them and, and getting them familiar with all the products new and existing. 
So um, with that being said, the Crossrail system, as I mentioned, is our flagship product. And this has been a very popular product. Our 44X came online uh, last year as a, um, basically, I wouldn't call it a light rail. It is lighter in weight, but it's not like other racking systems out there that are considered light. Uh, a lot of light rails are designed for cost-effective solutions in like Southern California, where there's a big market and there's no snow, not a high winds and things like that in Arizona. Um, but this system, the 44X is lighter weight, but it actually can be installed on the East Coast and in some areas and territories where there is snow. So um, that's important to keep in mind while it is our lightest rail, Nick's holding it up there. And I got to say, it's pretty nice to when you lift that and throw it up to the roof or on the truck, it's a lot lighter weight. Our 48X is a little bit heavier duty. Uh, the 48XL is definitely heavier duty. And then the 80 is a different profile based uh, for uh, or designed more for our ground mount system, but we do see some of them on commercial or even some bigger residential jobs. So um, so there's a variety of options here, and all of these are in our design tool, which you can select the rail and see what makes sense for you because the engineer is built in. So you put an address, you design the system, and as I mentioned, our inside sales team, our technical services team does have a lot of experience with that and can run you through it, and all of our outside sales guys are, are pretty familiar with the tool as well and can, can guide you through that process. And we do have some trainings and webinars on that, but uh, so if you're interested in the design tool, it's called BASE. And I highly recommend playing with it because that's where you can select these different products, the different rail profiles and see what works best for you. Are you going to get the spans you want? Um, are, and are you going to be using the right roof attachments for the job as well? So all of that is built into the system and you can play around with it with shared rail, dual rail, all that kind of stuff. And we'll talk about all these as we get through the Crossrail section. So Crossrail 44X went through a, it was released last year, but we also, uh, revised all the components. So we went with this single tool system, meaning that you can just use one 13 millimeter socket on the entire system. And a lot of guys are using like half inch sockets on, on five sixteenths lag bolt lag screws going into the roof. Uh, you can use a half inch socket if you're doing standard, uh, but 13 millimeter is the, the actual, actual, uh, correct socket to use if you want to be accurate. So we're an international company. The U S is, I think the only country using standard. So we actually been given out a couple of these 13 millimeter sockets. If you want them, Nick's holding one up there. Uh, but that yep. will allow you to install the entire system, mid clamps, the Yeti clamps, the, the rail connectors or splices, if you use that term, uh, and then all the hardware T-bolts and, 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 and everything else and optimizer mounting kits, things like that. So we'll go through, through some of these components here uh, in a minute, but I just wanted to point out that it is a single tool system. So if you've never used it, uh, that is a big change that a lot of customers are happy with. So getting into the different styles and applications of Crossrail, and this all will lend to obviously the tile section when we get there, but the Crossrail system is pretty diverse. You can do um, dual rail and shared rail. Dual rail is the standard, what you guys are already probably doing with two rows of, uh, or sorry, two rails per row of modules. Uh, pretty standard. That's going to be, you know, for tile for sure. Um, shared rail is a different concept where you actually share um, in the, you have the rail in between the rows of modules and you can share the rail and land on that. And that works really well with comp shingle and metal roofs because you have adjustability on the clamps and the roof penetrations or the roof attachments, I should say. So let's look at that real quick. So if you're interested in this, dual rail and shared rail use the same components. So there's only one additional piece um, if you're going to, when you do that shared rail on the rail, and then the roof attachment is going to change on comp. And I'll show you that here in a minute, but basic concept, you guys understand this standard dual rail, you got one, two, three, four row or four rails on a two row system. There it's pretty standard two rails per row, uh, industry standard. Obviously there's a lot of room for adjustability to clamp where you're going to clamp on the module frame module manufacturers have a specific zone those quarter points of where you can clamp onto the module frame. I've seen guys make that mistake where the rails are too close in together and they're not clamping on the right side that it's not going to 
hold the module on its strongest points. So just make sure you're, you're, you're reading those manuals. A lot of guys make up rules across companies like a cantilever is a great example where they just say, oh, it's just 24 across the board. But you need to look at the module manufacturer and the racking manufacturer. And a lot of times it's the, I'm talking about cantilever from the mount to the end of the rail. Uh, that's a big one that people mistakenly just use a common number like 24, which does translate in most cases, but it's actually a third of the max span uh, of what, what you have on the system. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, we do a, a, a complete installer training on technical stuff. Uh, we can talk about that more um, if you're interested in that. But going back to the comparison with uh, shared rail and dual rail, this is where it gets more innovative. So in this same layout, you have one, two, three rails instead of four where that second rail there, you're sharing between row one and two. So you're doing 1.5 rails per row of modules, if that makes sense. Same clamps, it reduces penetrations quite a bit, um, but the only additional part that I mentioned, and Nick's probably holding it up, I have one here too, is this add-on. This is our little sample kit that we give out. So Nick's holding that add-on and I have one here that's installed. And that's what you see on the screen too. Basically, when you're doing, when you're doing a regular system, you're going to have your, your module land here on the left side, your module here land on the right side, and then you're going to clamp it down. On a, on a shared rail system, you're going to have this rail on the back side catching the module onto this, onto this landing pad of what we call the add-on, which goes around the same mid clamp, and then you turn the mid clamp, and there you have a nice shelf to land the module on the front and the back side, and it splits, splits the... Uh, the rail perfectly so that you can have two rows of modules landing together. So you can see a side profile view there in the bottom left of what that looks like. And then, as I mentioned, the clamps, you, you have to have, you know, the standing seam, there's a good image that Nick's showing. Um, so the standing seam clamp automatically, our power clamp, that's going to glide north south naturally as it does. So you can, you don't have to have anything new except for the add on. Uh, that's the only additional part. On comp shingle, to get that north south adjustability, you would introduce our uh, e comp slider kit, which is basically an L foot kit with a mount that has a sliding bracket so that you can accomplish what Nick's showing there on the screen. So same mid, same ends, you would just use an add on and then the appropriate roof attachment if you're going to be doing that system. So um, so here's another animation that shows you the difference. You got 18 modules in portrait. So what is this? Six, six rows or sorry, three rows of six modules. Is that right? Uh, so you got on a dual rail system, you would have 24 penetrations, uh, six rail runs, right? But if you move this out to shared rail, you're going to have 16 penetrations and four rail runs. So it's about a 30% fewer pen on the penetration. So penetrations and roof attachments. So obviously this is like, I think this is based in San Diego. You got six foot spans. Um, it really depends on where you are and how you guys operate. If you don't want to do shared rail and you're not familiar with it, you don't have to do it. But what we do recommend if you're interested in it is start with dual rail first with, with the K2 um, cross rail system, get familiar with the components, uh, order a sample kit from one of our sales reps, play with the, the parts, take a training, do a system, do a couple systems, try it out. Then when you get more familiar with it and you start rocking and rolling, then design a system doing a simple shared rail to try it out. We, we offer a lot of support there with the design and installation if we can make it to the job site. And then get into some bigger arrays that are more complicated, that pyramid shape that you see on the screen there that's on a standing seam roof out in Portland. Uh, our, our friends over at uh, Elemental out there did that job and it worked great because you have that standing seam and then you have that pyramid shape in landscape uh, where shared rail does work really well in landscape. So then after that, then play with the design tool, switch back and forth, see what works best for you. You might want to just do um, standard dual rail or maybe mix it up on certain designs. You'll understand where it translates best uh, as you get going and do the more of these projects. So I encourage you to try out all these systems. Johan, as well. Best. What's that? Yeah, I wanted, to also, I wanted to also add with the shared rail, there are variations of shared rail where you can actually do tucking the rail and we can instruct and support 
how to do that, when to do that. And uh, it still provides the same return on investment while, while reducing your penetrations. So right. and uh, shared aesthetic. rail does have its place. Yeah. Right. Totally. So when he says tucked rail, we're talking about that front and back rail. If you're sharing the rail all the way up, technically you can take the module and take the rail and move it up like a regular dual rail system on the first rail and the second and the last rail, but have them shared in between. So that's a pretty cool system and it looks really nice, but that would be more an advanced uh, shared rail installer. But we, we do a lot of whole training on that. So if you're interested, it's already recorded on our website and we'll do them again later this quarter, I, I imagine. So as we update some products. Okay, so the other side of the crossrail system is the tilt up and the ground mount system. So if you're, these are the same rail, same mids and ends. The only additional part here on the on the uh, tilt up system is the rail, the tilt up connector set, and basically that allows you to take a small rail section and use it as the back leg and the front leg. And a lot of guys pre-assemble these things and then you can run two rails across. That's why it's originally called cross rail actually. And this system is really nice because you have so much flexibility within that connector set. So you can move around the, the height adjustment of it. You can, un, even when the module is in. So Nick's holding a small, Nick's holding a, a sample of it where you have a small rail for the back leg and then you can put the t-bolts on that connector set and then attach that front leg and then that gives you the tilt you need and there's different measurements of the back leg to get your tilts um and you could see some example pictures there those are some jobs i was actually on in tucson uh where they have a lot of flat roofs for residential and they need to tilt yes. it up so that that works really well. Uh, I'd say that's probably one of our most popular products in Mexico, and it's becoming more popular in the Southwest for us. Rather than doing like a ballasted system on a small resi roof, like in New Mexico or uh, or Arizona, uh, you could do this tilt up system, and it and, and it is very forgiving, and it uses all the same components on the residential flush mounted system same rail same mids so you don't have to mix up different parts for different systems so really nice can, product. I, can I add to that yeah, yeah go for it to that johan so that actually is one of the best things is your return on investment by using the cross rail system is because you have all of these rail clippings that come off of the comp shingle jobs and the tile installs where it's you know maybe uh you know a seven foot piece or a three foot piece or maybe even down to a 14 inch piece. The return on investment is, is you can deploy that equipment to these tilt jobs. So you guys don't have to say no to these flat roofs, you know, that are like, you know, an Eichler style construction or very minimal pitch rolled asphalt roof. You guys can say yes to these uh, installs because you guys have the material already there. The parts for that, that you want to explain the tilt assembly kit, this ships in boxes of 20. This is a very small part with a lot of uh, impact on the install. And then that climber set as well already engages into our rail. And this is one of the strongest ways to do tilt. So there's a lot of reinforced bracing on this. So instead of just having one leg in the rear and one leg in the front, and then your rails run horizontal and all of that stress on the array, we're running the rails perpendicular and putting rails on top horizontally. One of the main reasons why a lot of installers in Northern California use our system is because they have the flexibility to pivot onto a tilt system, tile system, or a comp roof without any specialty telescoping large extrusions or you know square extrusions and things like that. So go ahead, Johan. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Nick. Uh, very good points. Um, and we do have a webinar that we recorded that goes over some of these systems. So. Uh, if you're interested in this product or any of them I'm mentioning, like the ground mount, <clears throat> I'm just breezing through just to show you the capability of Crossrail. But we have webinars recorded on these, and we have product videos that cover the systems as well. Um, so if you if you want more information on this, just go to our website. Basecamp is our as our training platform there, and you can go through there and and check out. Um, more information on all of these. So our ground mount system, uh, as I mentioned, is. Primarily used with Crossrail 80. And if you're wondering what the number is, the number is basically the height of the rail profile in millimeters. So that's where the name 44, 48, 
and 80 come from. So, um, so the 80 is our most popular for the ground mount and it has integrated wire management as all our rails do. And we are actually updating this and you'll see more information on this where we can do much more with this system. We're doing additional engineering on this to allow for uh, more capability. So you'll see an update on that later in the quarter, I believe. Um, but right now this is available and we do have pre-engineered systems with for four rows and landscape, 20 to 35 degree tilts, uh, zero to 50 pound snow load, 100 to 130 mile per hour winds for some of these pre-engineered systems. So if you're interested in that, just reach out to your local rep. Um, everybody is on our website, by the way, if you missed the local reps and where who's your rep in your region, your territory, it's on our website under find a rep and you can, you can find everybody there and, and give them a call. Um, so the components, as I mentioned, are universal across the board. I didn't mention uh, in, in detail, I didn't go over the uh, D-Dome, which is our dual tilt ballasted system and our mini rail, but all of those use the same mids and ends um, in, in most applications. So we try to make our parts universal. So we'll get into these components here right now. So a part of the improvements we made last year with the single tool system was this mid clamp. So a lot of people like our mid clamp uh, because it's spring loaded, it's pre-assembled, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to install once you have it engaged. And I've got this little sample kit and Nick showing it there too. Uh, it's spring loaded here. Uh, it used to be that this was just a regular bolt and you would lose some real estate in the rail channel. I'll show you that here. You, what you're looking at on the screen is the same I'm holding up in my hand. Uh, literally exactly the same as Nick too. Uh, so we changed this to have this little, this cylinder here so that the bolt recesses into the cylinder and does not take up space in the rail, which opens it up for more wire management. Uh, and so now, and then we also added the hex head. So it's single tool. And also we have more wire management clips that you can see there. So Nick's showing you the hex head that's a part of the single tool. So if you're wondering about these parts, we did change, we, we only added an H at the end of the part number. So if distribution has got a mix of both, you can distinguish between the two. Um, the, the mid clamp and a lot of our accessories like the optimizer mounting kit, our ground lug, uh, all of them use what we call an MK3. So that basically is this little small, this little slot nut that is a part of the, of the uh, mid clamp. And Nick and I are both holding it up. So if you put it in the rail channel and you turn this, that allows it to engage. It bonds for UL 2703 integrated grounding um, and it is maneuverable so you can move it around. So there's some good animations that I have in here that I could show you, but this works for all of our, our mid clamps or end clamps, the optimizer mounting kit. If you look at the bottom of the screen, I got a little image of them. The, uh, the ground lug, which has the MK3 built in, as well as that climber set for the uh, for the tilt up system. So this is just a little video that just goes through an animation that shows you how the components come together and how it installs pretty nicely in the rails. So we have a video of this on our website, just to show you, if you're not familiar with the cross rail system, this is what you're going to want to play with, with the sample kit, because every mid clamp end clamp is different. Some of them don't just stand in there. You have to actually have the module in and then put it in and then hold it and, and tighten it down or else it won't stand up. These you can preset in the rail as someone's bringing up modules, you can preset them in the rail and have them ready to go and you can slide them around and then install them. So it works really well. Um, the optimizer mounting kit is the same MK3, goes into the slot of the rail and then allows you to attach a microinverter or an optimizer. So uh, the ground lug uses that same MK3 and uh, allows you to install, install a, the copper wire running over on the top channel of the rail. We do have a weeb lug set that goes to the side channel of the rail. If you're doing uh, like shared rail, for instance, you, you take up all the real estate on the top of the rail. So you won't need to do some side mounting. It's all there. Um, okay, so the I, I, I wanted to just drop one thing. Sorry to interrupt uh, about the, uh, 
the ground look. So uh, Johan said in the beginning of the presentation that we take a lot of customer focus and take a lot of feedback and voice a customer and really try to pour it into the product. And, uh, you know, here at K2, we don't just want to assume that we know best. We want to hear from you. We want to know what works in the field, what's practical, uh, what what is something that saves time. And the ground lug is one of those leaps that we were able to do, incorporated into our rail, completely uh, asked for by the installer and contractor network that we talked to. So those are some of the things that we try to make sure we're always pouring that value back into in that in that voice of customer into the product, so you guys have the resources and support and the product performs the way you want it to. Right, yeah, well, that's a part of our job is um, voice a customer. So we take, we, don't, we can't even develop a product unless we get those VOCs from you guys and we get customers, key customers and partners to look at designs and, you know, approve what they want and get design requirements. So, um, I, I, whenever I'm on the roof, I'm always taking notes and, and trying to improve the product with our engineers. So uh, that's a, definitely a good point. Our Yeti clamp is our hidden end clamp. Um, it's a nice product that just slides into the rail and allows you to clamp onto the inside. Nick's showing it on screen there better than I am. So you slide it into the rail channel and then you have a bolt there that comes from the side. So you just take your, your socket, with either an extension or just a deep socket will reach it. Um, no problem. And you, you, there's a slot in there for you can put a zip tie and pull it towards you. But honestly, I just reach underneath and push it towards me and then install it. And what happens is that that kind of hammer arm on there actuates forward and grabs the flange of the module on the interior. So module manufacturers call this interior clamping, which is pretty nice because you're not pinching glass. I've seen a lot of guys, you know, sometimes when a module gets compromised, it gets banged around. You don't even see it, but it's compromising the glass and the integrity. And then it's a windshield. So you put a little point load on it and you drive it down. And some guys are using impacts on everything. You drive that down. If you look at that, that, that frame profile that Nick has there of the module, there's a section in there where the glass goes. So if you pinch that down way too hard with an impact, you can break the glass. I've seen it happen on, on all different systems. Uh, so this allows you to really just hammer that Yeti clamp down and tighten it down to metal. It's a metal to metal contact point and you won't damage any glass. So, I mean, these modules are pretty hardy, but if you compromise it, it can break. And we, we still do have standard end clamps that you have, you see there at the bottom of the screen, but obviously sometimes you can interchange these and mix these in. So if there's a side of the array that's pointing straight to the front of the home and you just see it every day and they don't want to see it, uh, a lot of guys will just use these Yeti clamps and chop off the rail flush with the, with the module and then slide in the Yeti, tighten it down, and then put an end cap on it as you see the top picture there. So that's the same exact section where a friend of mine had a job. Uh, he had never seen the Yeti clamps. I, I went up there. We pulled those, those standard uh, end clamps off, and we put in the, the Yeti clamps and chopped the rail. So it, it looks much cleaner. So uh, with that, just to cap that off and move into the tile section, um, we're at the halfway points, so it's perfect. Um, the wire management solutions, obviously it's extremely important with any racking company. The racking companies have been, for some reason, put into the position of having to manage all the wire management stuff. Module manufacturers just make the whips and they don't have anything to say about it after that. But So we get stuck with, with the wire management. Uh, that's me busting the chops of module manufacturers because we seem to have to be the only ones that work on this. And it'd be nice if they got involved and standardized on a bunch of things, but they don't. So uh, it's up to us to figure it out. So there's a couple of different methods and we have a whole video on wire management, but our rail has a deep channel. So you can run wires, home runs in the rail. A lot of times when I'm putting in the optimizer mounting kit, I take the whips of the optimizer and throw them to each side drop them in the rail, then install the optimizer mounting kit. And then that way they're, they're, they're locked into the rail 
and then you can rip them, you can whip them out to the sides, connect them into the next one next to it. And then you can either take the connections and some guys like to put it in the rail or some guys like to put it on the side of the rail with our hay clip Sunrunner or the Omega clips on the side. So, and then we have our TC wire clip, which is really nice because if you're running wires, we both have it here. If you're running wires out to the next row, you, you know, sometimes you jump over, you can tuck that in and keep it taut into the rail. So that's a really nice feature. Anyone I've ever showed this to on a job site loves it immediately. So that came from installers and our designers and we, we made that product based on some of the feedback. So that was a home run and that's called the TC, Most definitely. TC wire clip. It stands for top and channel because it locks into the top channel. Um, I right. wanted to also throw in there, Johan, we do offer both of those uh, outdoor rated ABS wire clips, the TC and the Omega. And of course, Johan did say that we have the, uh, the hay clip as well, which is stainless steel. I'm sure you guys know that there are some jurisdictions out there that don't allow zip ties and they enforce on the stainless steel uh, wire clips. That's why we have all three. We have two, uh, you know, two uh, polymer ones, and then we have one stainless steel one just to make sure that we cover all those bases. So I try to put the part numbers in every slide showing products so you can see what's going on and jot them down. You can screenshot it, whatever you need to do. Um, but this is all on our website, so you can go in there and check accessories. All right, let's move into the roofing real quick, and then we'll get into the top products. So composition shingle, tile, metal, these are the most popular residential roofs, right? And obviously, we're focusing on tile, but I did want to mention that we have roof attachments for all of those mentioned. We have comp mounts, staining seam clamps, our power clamp. Uh, obviously tile hooks, and we'll get into the, the ones we're releasing now, uh, in addition to the flat and the S tile. Uh, the low slope mount, or sorry, the, the T foot X is a low slope mount that is really cool and came from one of our most, one of our biggest customers wanted us to make this and we did, and it's been a home run. And we call this the T foot X. So it's basically for attaching to a flat roof, um, and then you can directly attach your rail right onto that and not have a standoff and then an L foot. It's just a little bit redundant. So here's a good example on Brett's house. Actually, he just finally got solar, I believe last year, and he did his own job with a local installer and he got his hands dirty uh, and he installed this and put in um, our, our T foot X with that dropped into a Chemlink E curb. And then he did our tilt up system right off of it. So it worked really good. No, no additional L feet needed. Uh, it's built into the foot. So that's a new product that is available. It has been kind of flying off the shelf. So uh, check with your sales rep and distributor if you, if you are interested in that. I did mention we have a D dome system, which is our ballasted uh, dual tilt system. That's on our website for any of these roof types, if you're wondering about that. Okay. So getting into tile tile, I can go, I can go for hours on tile. So if you're new to tile or you're doing tile or you're frustrated with tile, this has been a roof that I've worked with extensively and worked really hard on a lot of products over my entire career. So um, I did take the Tile Roofing Institute course many years ago and got certified as a tile roofer. Um, but I learned a lot about stuff, roofing in that course and a lot about tiles. So concrete tiles, the interlocking tiles that you see at the top there are the most popular modern tiles. They're interlocking, meaning they have a cap and pan that locks into the, in the, the sides. And then they typically either lock onto a batten or get nailed in directly. So the most popular are the flat tile, S tile and W tile shapes. So those have been standardized for modern tile roofs and it's getting easier and easier to identify these and work with them. So it's nice that the roofing industry is standardizing on these, but us being a Southern California company, we are very aware and very familiar as, as well as in Mexico uh, with clay tiles, Spanish tile, traditional cap and barrel tile. In some areas like Hawaii, you'll even see, or in Japan, you'll see a a lot of those porcelain tiles. You'll see those on some high-end homes or the old school asbestos that's a little bit uh, outdated, but you'll see some of these kind of oddball tile roofs. And it's good to know how to identify these because if you're using like a replacement tile flashing, which we're gonna talk about in a minute here, 
you got to know where that's going to work and where that's not going to work or else, you know, you're going to have all kinds of different, you know, hurdles to get over and stopping points with the job. You want to try to do as much due diligence as possible and avoid any delays in an install. So knowing the roof type is extremely important. So getting into how the construction is of these roofs, <clears throat> I did a whole tile article on our newsletter. If you're not on our newsletter, do sign up. We won't annoy you with all this, you know, whatever announcements every day. It's basically just giving you an announcement on new products, where we're going to be, and, and uh, new information coming out like this. We did a newsletter and I did an extensive deep dive into tile roofs. So if you want to read that, it's in our newsletter. It's on, on the page. Uh, Dakota, you can always link it into the chat if you want. Uh, there's a news art, or a, a, a an article that I wrote, a technical article on roofing, and I go over this in much more detail. But basically back in the 80s, they used to allow, before this code change in the 80s, they used to allow for skip sheathing. So that's what you're seeing on that bottom left picture there. That's literally a picture that somebody told, sent to me and said, what should I do? And I joke around and always say, I always just say run away because that is not a fun job. That is a, a old school style skip sheathing roof where you don't have any solid plywood and the tiles are directly onto the roof on skip sheathing. So it's a, it's a little bit more European style. They don't allow it anymore. They changed the code because there's so much water intrusion going on that they, they basically now want solid sheathing and, or roof decking, which is plywood, OSB, whatever it's going to be. And then some sort of underlayment water barrier, which is typically a 30 pound felt paper or some kind of synthetic underlayment. A lot of roofing companies are starting to make these underlayments. Felt paper is tried and true, and it's been used for eons and you still see it. Um, and then you have either battens or direct attached uh, tiles where they're nailed in directly. In Florida, if you got any Florida guys here, they're probably laughing at this because they do some pretty extensive stuff out there. They do a little bit of this where they do battens and, and secure it, but they also do what's pretty, I think, unique to Florida. I don't see this anywhere else where they foam spray it in and glue them down because of hurricane areas. So I'm not even going to open up that can of worms, but that is a style that you will see in Florida. So if you're Florida uh, on this webinar and you want to know more about that, the Tile Roofing Institute does show some of that, but I would just YouTube and Google you know, tile roof building Florida, and you'll see how they build them. And it'll give you some more insight on how to address these when you go do a site visit. So again, the Tile Roofing Institute puts out best practices. So a lot of people get confused when they say, is this code? Like double flashing is a very good example. Double flashing is because they require underlayment and top tiles for waterproofing. Basically, the Tile Roofing Institute is a nonprofit that writes manuals and best practices for tile roof construction and, and all that goes with it with flashing and, and all the flashings and everything and how to install it. And roof manufacturers point to this to say, do it that way. And so some jurisdictions look at this section where they say, oh, you have to double flash. You're penetrating through the underlayment with the roof penetration. You have to flash both. So if a jurisdiction mandates this, most guys as a retrofit are either three coursing with tar, which is very messy and extensive labor, or they're trying to bib around it with felt paper um, and, and extend that felt paper. I've done this many times. It's not fun. It's not easy. Uh, you can do some types of peel and stick if they allow it. It's not always proven. Uh, we are researching some of that right now with different types of butyl and sticky pads and things like that. Um, but not, I put in red there, not all AHJs, not all building departments will mandate this. And most installers feel comfortable just sealing up the lag bolts with like M1 or whatever you're using good. And then putting the tile up on top, uh, you know, some will argue that water doesn't get, you know, that intense underneath the tile. Some will argue the otherwise, but this is a big debate in the industry. So we're doing a lot of research on this and trying to figure out what works best. So if you want more information on this, 
do get onto our newsletter because we're releasing new products that will hopefully solve some of these problems in some of these more cumbersome jurisdictions. So I talk about work efficiency and tips and tricks on the roof. This is a little bit more of our professional, like K2 professional training courses. So if you want more of this information, I do train crews on not just product, but how to be smart and fast and efficient, you know, like not sharing tools, dividing up work stages, uh, how to, you know, seal up pilot holes, things like that, and what to do properly, how to walk on tile roofs is a big one. So uh, just if you're interested in this, please do reach out. I'm happy to do a training with your crews if you want more of this information. Uh, it's hard for me to tell if you guys are either on the distribution side or if you're on the design side or if you're actually install crew side. So do pump in some questions. I see a couple of them coming in. That's great. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a little in a minute. But so ask questions, look up things uh, on tile roofs. When you're doing your site visits, look for cracked tiles. Uh, dislodge tiles, look in the valley to see if there's any pooling going on. Tile roofs are very susceptible to leaks when you get pooling and debris jamming up in there. It's basically a big giant gutter system underneath there, underneath the tiles. And you want to make sure that flow is not blocked and you don't have any like roof damage or water leaks in the attic or cracked rafters, things like that. This is just, it's like renting a car. You walk around, point out all the different things that are wrong with the, with the roof before you inherit some kind of uh, damage to the roof. So I'll, I'll skip this real quick. This is just showing you how the tile, the concrete tiles are profiled. This will come into play when we talk about these replacement flashings. So there's different styles to installing a hooks. Tile hooks are the most popular system out there. If you're dual, if you if you are uh, if you're half paying attention right now and checking emails and stuff, this is the meat of the of the presentation. So now's the time to pay attention. So uh, I apologize for going over so much on the cross rail and roofing, but let's get into these products right now. So the tile hooks are the most popular in the world for installing tile or sorry installing solar on tile. So some guys still notch out the tiles where they grind the bottom and let the hook come out. I've seen some guys not do anything and they just put the tile on top. That is wrong. You don't, if you see tiles popped, you know, on top of a roof, it's not right. Um, you're opening up that tile roofing system for bird nesting critters to get in there, debris leaves. It's not a good sign. So you want to create a, a gap, small enough gap to allow the hook to come out and that's it. So some are moving to these replacement tile flashings, which I was involved when the first ones came out when we were with Quick Mount, and uh, it was fun designing these, and they were a hit. Uh, basically, we looked at vents, you know, on the roof where there's fake fake tiles that look like tiles with their vents, and that's where we got the concept. So replacement flashings for hooks were a no-brainer. So we have two different hooks right now, the 3S hook and the flat tile hook. I'll get to the replacement tile flashings here and how they relate to this system here in a minute. But the existing product, our tried and true product is the S 3S tile. And I think Nick's holding up one right there. And I have one as well here. So uh, this is a really cool product, came from Germany, it has three stages of, of leveling there. So you can move it up and down because you have different heights and profiles of tiles. And then you can, uh, and then you can install as traditional L foot over that. I actually just pulled a screenshot of, of one of our customers job site permits that was using this system. Nick, you'll probably get a kick out of that. Uh, and I thought that was mm -hmm. displayed very nicely to show you the application. So there's the hook. It looks like it's at the bottom setting and then it comes back around and then you can put an L foot. So this product is unique in that the load is closer to the penetration so that you have a stronger system. So the whole German engineering is real. They are making these systems very robust. And so what that does is allow you to put an L foot and you have so much adjustability within the system uh, that it has become one of our most popular products. Also from Germany is our flat tile hook. Uh, we brought this over. It's not a traditional steel hook where it's flimsy and, and not strong enough to take some deflection. This, we designed it to basically have a little bit of an upslope so that it can take some deflection and higher snow loads. Like you're getting a lot of tile coming into places like Colorado. They're kind of sick of hail damage in Colorado. So they're starting to install tile roofs or metal roofs, but I've seen flat tile become much more popular in Colorado. This product is fantastic because it's strong. 
It's steel, it's simple. It comes with the lags with ceiling washers and the T-bolt. Uh, it's very strong. Whereas the, um, the new hook series that we're coming out with now are Thor products uh, series, tile hook on roof series uh, is a mix of these steel hooks that are more traditional in places like Arizona and Southern California. So in comparison to show you, you know, some guys said that flat tile hook looks very beefy and we're in Arizona, we're in Southern California and we don't need so much strength in this thing and we need more reach. So this is our flat tile hook and our flat tile hook X next to each other. And you could see how much bigger and longer it is and thinned out so it's a little bit less material and it has more throw on the hook. So there's so many different hook options out there and tile roofs and scenarios or snow, no snow, whatever you got going on, we pretty much have a full menu for you to choose from. So I highly encourage you to order a sample or check these out with your sales rep because we have a whole menu now that gives you options. So we still will carry the standard flat tile hook. And now we have the flat tile hook X, which is a, a longer hook that has a bigger uh, rise to it. Uh, probably going to be very popular in Southern California, whereas our standard flat tile hook will be more popular in places like Colorado or uh, anywhere with snow um, in, in tile country. Uh, and then our, our universal products have these adjustable, we have the universal standard hook plus two, which is a 5.5 base. We try to name these products for exactly what they are. So when you look at the line item, you can understand what you're getting. So this has adjustability. The universal standard hook nine inch base is this guy here. It's all welded one piece. Some people have different preferences. They don't want adjustability. They have pretty standard uh, tile roofs. This has been a very popular product out there as well as the adjustable 5.5 base. So again, here's some examples. There's the flat tile hook X. I try to put a, a, you know, the rendering to show the detail and then the install picture to show you how it looks on the roof. So you can see it's not flush at the bottom of the tile and it's still reaching very far out from the drip edge there. So it's a longer hook. It's designed for bigger tiles um, and, and, um, and just a standard, uh, set up in Southern California, Arizona. Uh, the There's the standard nine inch universal. I try to show some different images there so you can move it around to get it to where you need. That can be installed on flat tile, S tile, W tile, whatever you need. That's why we call it a universal. Also universal is this adjustable 5.5, right? So you could see I got the, the hook down there at the bottom, adjusting it into the different slots to where you can uh, move it over from the rafter and get out into the valley of the tile. I hope that all makes sense. Um, we can show this again if you want in the, in the Q&A here in a minute. Uh, the replacement tile flashings, I'm extremely excited about these. So um, we designed these. So as I mentioned, I was very involved in the early development of the first product to do this style. And there were a lot of issues that we learned once these products started getting out there. And so we built in some of these features where we have securement tabs on the side to lock it into the tile instead of having to cut it and manipulate it. And then we also built in these tabs here so that the hook can come out cleanly and you don't have to do any tin snipping, right? So this one, folds back and you can have the hook come out. The one Nick's holding there is the flat tile. That has a, a clean flush face to it because you don't know where the hook's gonna go, right? In that whole section that Nick's showing there. So that's the only one that you have to snip, but it's pretty easy. You cut two lines and then push it back and you're good. Still has the securement tabs on the side, uh, but the W and the S tile version does have the uh, securement tabs, or sorry, the tabs built in for the hook. So Nick is showing those secure tabs there. And the reason why that's important is this is a great example. Uh, we were on a job the other day and, and you could see on a flat tile roof, this is an example where sometimes the roofs are wavy and you get tiles kind of popping and you can't tell very much. And so the flashings tend to pop with it when it's locked into that cap and pan that I mentioned of the profile. I think it's in this slide. Here's a good example. So there's the cap and pan profile of the tiles right on the side. They call it a cap and pan where they interlock. 
you've got the cap that goes over the pan that interlocks on the next tile, right? So there's, I try to pull up some roofing images there where you could see those, they call it a water lock there. It's call, also called a cap and pan. So we omitted that. So you're not locked into that cap and pan because what that does is it locks you in one side and then it pops the corner of the other side and you're having to cut it and manipulate it. So we just made the flashings wider and we cap over the entire tile that you're replacing. And then you secure them with the tabs on the side as we showed here earlier. So these securement tabs allow you to take it, it's built in and you can wrap it underneath the tile and lock them in place. And you don't have to have, you know, the tiles popping out on you all the time. So pretty cool product. I was very adamant about having built-in securement tabs and built-in tabs for the hooks. I think we knocked it out of the park with our engineers. They were very much listening to us. We interviewed a bunch of customers using products, um, different products, and this was the final design. And this is coming out in the next couple months. Uh, we are having some, obviously everybody's having issues with COVID, but logistics becomes a moving target. So uh, if you're on the distribution side, you hopefully be our patient, but orders are becoming available very soon. We have a lot of them coming in stock already. There's some of them, uh, I believe the s -tile one is the only one that's gotten held up. So um, if you're wondering about availability, just let us know and we'll give you some updates as they come. But we, we have these landing in our shop now, um, but we want to wait till we have all of them. So if you're interested in these products, uh, I try to put the part numbers somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, they're at the bottom there. It's also on our website. Uh, Dakota, if you can share the one sheet document or something or, or links, we can, we can get you guys that. Um, but again, so some of the design features real quick, uh, they have water diversion. So there's a lot of ingenuity in this product to divert the water away from the penetration. So if you're wondering why we have all those curves, it's basically acting to shed the water out and any debris that comes in, it's going to naturally work with the waterproofing system of the roof. So Nick's demoing that there. Um, so again, here's some of our documentation. You're going to start seeing some more product videos like our Thor series, which is pretty fun. Uh, we have some videos on that. And then some of our distributors are starting to see our new displays. So if you're in Northern California, I think Nick's already outfitted a couple of distributors. Uh, Arizona and Texas are getting theirs, I think, this week. And uh, our distributors are starting to get these displays, which are showing all the hooks, all the components of our Crossrail system. And we'll probably have some replacement flashing samples on the shelves below. So check out our website for more updates and, and get on our newsletter. Uh, Basecamp, again, is our product resource uh, hub for technical training, product installation videos. Um, any kind of event information that's coming up. We got more events coming up. If you're in the Northeast, uh, I will be out at the conference there. And then we'll be at NAPSEP uh, giving out uh, trainings there and we'll be we'll have a booth as well. So if you want to get a hold of me and you want to organize some kind of custom training or you want to reiterate this to some of your team uh, or want to go ever over any of this again, let me know, reach out. Um, so I know that's a lot of information and I blasted it through there at the last minute there. And I apologize. It's hard to kind of distinguish who wants to hear what I got a lot of feedback on Crossrail, So I spent a little time on that, but the tile stuff, uh, we do have uh, recorded webinars on that. Um, if you, I think this is actually live streaming on Facebook for the first time. So if you're on Facebook joining us, I appreciate that. And um, feel yes, free to reach you. out. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me and Nick um, and and any of our inside sales or outside sales reps in your area. And we're happy to help you get more familiar with this product. We'll help you understand when it's coming in stock. The hooks are available, I believe, the end or I would say the beginning of June. We're going to start sending out product, but it's kind of hard. We have target target dates, but they keep moving. But um, just bear with us as we get through some of these crazy times with COVID because the logistics are a nightmare. Uh, but we have product coming in. I've seen them coming in on our shelves. So um, these are coming into stock. So again, if we got any questions, put them in there. Nick, I don't know if you see them or if you want to read some off or, or, or if you want to add to some of what we we're just saying. I'm looking exactly. At I do want to add to that. Thank you, Johan. 
for ca carving out time today to you know meet with everybody and uh, and and host a webinar today. Um, uh, to reiterate some of the points that Johan was making about the tile hooks and the TRFs, yes, we have taken a ton of voice of customer into the development of these, and we're very proud to bring them to the market. As he was saying about the TRFs, they are oversized, so you're, they're going to be a lot more friendly to install on that tile project, on your next tile project that you're going to do. Uh, a lot more forgiving to install, and of course, we've come out with a variety of options for tile hooks. You know, tile hooks are kind of king right now in that in that tile roofing market. Uh, so we obviously have our uh, heavily engineered aluminum hooks, but the market has spoken. They do want stainless steel hooks, so we have taken that to the next level with our uh, stainless steel hooks. Right. And I think there are some questions, Dakota. Are, are they? Do we have? Yeah, any I got them right here. I'm gonna. I was gonna read them, but I wanted to put on the slide. Uh, I wanted to put th that slide that shows the hooks you're talking about. Um, but yes, yeah, so I had a great question, um, that came up that somebody asked if, um, we're ever going to develop a product that is a solution for panels, like integrating the panels so that they basically a BIPV. It sounds like Lewis, you're asking if we want, if we're ever going to do a BIPV type system where the modules are integrated into the roofing. So we're, we're not really developing BIPV type stuff. I've seen, I think it was Certainty had a, a system at one point. Um, there was a couple different companies. Actually, my sister works in the industry and she used to work for a French company. What was the name of that one, Nick? It was... Uh, uh, integrated Roof Systems, IRFTS. Yeah. And they were... Yeah. They, yeah, they had a system. Sorry, I'm going to this slide so you guys can see what Nick was talking about. Um, they had a system that had trays on the roof and you could lay down those trays, which are basically like gutters. And then you lay the modules right into them and then you roof around it. Pretty cool little system, actually. I thought it was awesome. I wouldn't be surprised if that comes back. Now that you have construction up, um, you're starting to see some of that new roof application and development going on. I could see that being popular there. But to answer your question, Lewis, we're not developing anything like that. Germany's not either. It's not something we're really looking at. We're just, you know, rack straight up racking. We are trying to get more innovative, which leads into uh, Kurt's question, which somebody asked, Kurt asked, will the mini rail type solution ever be available for comp shingle and tile roofs? That's a great question. We get that all the time. The mini rail is basically, mm -hmm. I don't know if you have one there, Nick. I don't actually have Got one, one right here. Uh, yeah. So the mini rail is what Nick's holding up there. And it's a great question, Kurt, because because people ask us all the time. The mini rail came from Germany and it's a really popular product. It's also popular in Mexico right now where you have trapezoidal roofs. I, I think I even show it in here um, where you put that on the top of the trapezoidal and screw it into the metal roof. So a lot of people are tempted to take that. There's a little image of it down there on the right. People are tempted to put that on comp, but it, cause it has a little seal pad on the bottom, but it's an EPDM foam seal. So we've been doing a ton of research on seals. So if you caught our, our podcast, I did an interview podcast interview with solar power world. And I talked, a little, I kind of spilled the beans on our splice foot X that's coming out. And I talked about seals. A lot of people are starting to come out with, um, come out with, um, non-metal flashing seals. I'll just hold one up here and, and, and show you. So people are coming out with these non-metal flashing seals where you basically peel it like roof tech. Uh, we work with roof tech on this. Uh, you peel and stick down and you don't have a metal flashing. Where that I think is attractive is in really hot climates like Arizona, uh, Nevada, you know, Las Vegas is a great example where the shingles are so hot, you can't pry up the shingle. So they want these so-called self-sealing, flexible flashing type products. And I know there's a roundabout way of saying like people want to take our mini rail and stick it on there, but it's not designed to work with asphalt like uh, a comp shingle roof or a uh, felt paper roof. Felt paper is asphalt and it's impregnated uh, the, the paper is impregnated with asphalt material in it. So they're not compatible with that. That's just the, the mini rail is designed for metal roofs only. And so, but yes. we are looking at solutions like this because Germany does have 
a bunch, K2 Germany has a bunch of products that are these mini rail or micro rail, and it's a pretty interesting system. So we're looking at it, but we're also looking at self-sealing products. And in my opinion, I think Rooftech has the most research on this. And we have developed a new product called the Splice Foot, which incorporates a seal like theirs. Um, and it's coming out actually, well, that would probably be our next webinar, actually. You'll probably see our newsletter come out about this. I'm literally writing a technical article on this right now. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, that is coming out. Get on our newsletter, sign up. Uh, I don't know, Dakota, if there's a link to just get on our newsletter. Um, but Kurt, to answer your question, the comp, the mini rail system is designed for metal roofs trapezoidal only but we are developing up yes. some new systems that are similar to that and it's going to start opening up the door for that type of system but it's not a mini rail it's more of a standard rail but uses some self-sealing technology so i know it's kind of a a roundabout way of saying we'll get there <laughs> you know so yeah. some other questions coming you can go ahead and add to that nick i'll read this question yeah go go ahead i uh i wanted to just say that i've had a lot of success with this product uh when i onboarded to the team two years ago one of my first projects was actually a canopy carport structure where they decided to use these instead and it was a full megawatt project down in Fresno, California, called the Fresno Municipal Center. And we were very proud to ship 13,000 of these to that job site. So these ship in boxes of 20, they come with structural metal tapping screws, and they are designed for multiple gauge thickness of trapezoidal metal. So these are perfect for canopy structures, carport structures that are as built with roofing already, and you wanna retrofit solar onto them. They're terrific for a house of worship, a church, a gymnasium for a school, a very modern style uh, shopping mall that has metal roofing. Uh, a lot of developers are integrating metal roofing into their products because uh, into their projects because the metal roofing lasts so long. It can last 50 years or more if it is the right type of coated uh, metal roofing. And the Mini Rail Ex Express, it plays really friendly with that because it ships right to the job site in small boxes, uses all of our components that Johan went over for Crossrail, and it can be deployed to a job site very easily. Uh, and also one of, the, one of the return on investments are, is there's no L foot or rail or rail connector, you know, uh, structural splice. You just use this guy and it's about 30% savings on your project right at the start. So uh, we, we, we have a lot of installers that are full adoption on this product. So uh, I'm glad somebody did bring it up because it is one of those things that we don't really get to show that off. So thanks for asking. Yeah, I know we're out of time, but there was one last question. Lewis is asking a question. It sounds like you're in Europe, Lewis. So if you're in, in Europe, um, we have a whole nother slew of products out there. Uh, we have an office, I believe in France and in Italy. Um, I'm not sure where you are. You mentioned Italy, I think in there or France, um, but it looks like you're trying to figure out some systems like shared rail and then sealing the seams. We have seen, seen some guys do some custom projects like that where they, he's talking about sharing, you know, getting the modules tight and then sealing it. Oh, you're in Mexico. Oh, great. Uh, we have an office in Mexico as well. So uh, if you, we can connect you with our team out there um, so that you can check this out. But we have seen some guys try to seal the seam between modules. It's a, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, I actually have a friend who's a, an architect that did it um, as well. It's always custom. So it's hard to do. We don't make anything like that, but uh, we can try to help you out. Uh, if you're doing a custom project or maybe some development, we can try to do that, but uh, it hasn't been high on the list yet. Um, but it's interesting for parking lots and terrace and things like that, definitely. Um, all right, so we're out of time. I don't see any more questions. Uh, I appreciate the ones that came in, Lewis and Kurt. Um, if you guys have more questions, feel free to reach out. There's my email. Uh, you'll get a follow-up email as well. If you want the NAPSEP credit, just have to message us, uh, I believe, and just give us a little time because we have to actually document everybody that takes the NAPSEP credit and make sure they're not doubling it up. So this is a part of our tile section and cross rail section. It's one credit per hour. So you'll get that one at one credit. Um, but we will be at the Northeast show next. 
And uh, I believe our Mexico team, Luis, is starting to do road shows again soon. So check with them. They're a great team and they have grown quite a bit. And um, so let us know if you have more questions. We appreciate you guys joining us today. Um, and we'll just sign off now and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks again. Thank you all. Be well out there. Thank you, Johan. Thanks, guys. Stay safe.